this is not gonna work. I need a shower. Well, hello! Hello again, and thank you to all of those people who are joining us once again for my vlog. What's he saying? Nobody knows. I've just spent about 10 minutes uh, without the camera being on, looking into this <laughs> and doing this. Uh, now you might have noticed I haven't posted a vlog, weekly vlog, this week or last week and that's because I've just been dashing around and didn't have that much to talk about. So thought I'd save it all for this! He's beauty and he's grace, he's Miss United States. But thank you for coming back and joining us once again. Um, I hope you're all well. Congratulations, you've made it to February without bankruptcy, death, famine, war. So for those of you that have watched my earlier vlogs, um, you will see behind me, ta -ta, two of the things. So up here we have the twat waffle. For those of you that remember, this was a discussion, I think it was in my second or third vlog, uh, with my sister Stacey. Uh, not long after that went out, she coloured this in and sent it to me. Thank you to all the twat waffles out there. This one's for you. Now the other thing is uh, from my very first vlog, uh, when I told you about my Christmas present from my best friend Tanya. Well, January has gone and now it is February. So I'd like to introduce you to Miss February, Miss Tanya Peasel Everett. I mean, she'll be mortified. She'll be mortified. <laughs> so once again, I'd just like to them the <laughs> I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all of the people who have liked and subscribed and watched and shared my vlog so far. So, what's been going down in my world? So much. Um, about two weeks ago, I took part in a little bit of medical roleplay. We all love a bit of roleplay. Um, so this was for um, some dental students that were graduating and I was Mr. Andrew Brown who just had his lower left, no, lower right molar removed and I also had uh, a cyst in my stomach. I don't know if the two are related. So basically the ins and outs of the role play is that I'm in a room with an examiner as Andrew Brown. I just had my tooth removed so they had to give me some aftercare. This basically took about four minutes so I was there from eight o'clock in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon so imagine doing this repeatedly every four minutes for that amount of time I mean granted we did have some breaks and stuff but it may seem monotonous but it was actually a little bit entertaining because a lot of the students were quite nervous um, and if you're nervous you just have no control over your body so some of them were just doing this hello Mr. Brown um I believe that you've just had your um, tooth removed, um, so I'm just here to, do, to give you a little bit of information on what to do after you've had your tooth removed. Um, just because... Can't hear a word you're saying, speak up or don't speak at all. Then there was obviously the polar opposite, which was... Hello Mr. Brown, well I've just been told you've just had your lower left molar removed, so I'm just basically here to give you some aftercare. So basically we need to make sure you don't drink anything hot or too cold that you chew on the other side of your mouth and you don't smoke because that can cause dry cavity. We don't want dry cavity, so basically what we need to do is just make sure you keep the gauze in your mouth and you bite and you don't let any blood come out because if you do spit, then all of this stuff's going to come out. So don't spit, no do spit. <laughs> Sorry? And also they are on a time limit, so when they hear this noise of like a, an alarm, little alarm that goes off in the corridor and um, that's their signal that they need to stop talking, leave the room and that's the end of that examination in that room. Some of them are halfway through and they can't get their words out. So they end up just losing all control over their body and some of them just did things like this. Okay, thanks so much for your time Mr. Brown, okay, thank you, bye bye. <laughs> okay, thanks Mr. Brown, take care, have a great day, okay, bye. How do you... Where's the, where's the door? <laughs> oh my god! Oh! Okay, thanks, bye. bye! Bye! And one of my other personal faves that I got straight to me was... Okay, so you've had your tooth removed? Okay, so you need to give it a rest? Give it a rest? I'm not, I'm not doing anything! I've just had my tooth out! But the most interesting part of the day was the woman who I was in the room with, she was the examiner. We got chatting and, you know, she says, oh, what do you do? What do you do apart from this? And we were chatting and stuff. And I was like, oh, so 
Are you a dentist? No, I'm ex-military. Ex-military? Is that the natural progression? <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm a marine, so... What could I do from here? I know! I'll be a dental examiner. So, one of the other things that I've been noticing whilst I've been doing my commute and going to work and stuff, this can apply to people on trains, on planes, on buses, all over the country. And when I tell you who they are, you will know. So, it's the sort of people who you're in a rush, get on the train or the bus in the morning, and it's the people who always seem to manage to find extra room on a packed train for their newspaper. Now these people with their massive newspapers always look a certain way and have a certain mannerism. So I thought you might not actually know who these people are or what they look like. So here's a little checklist of the things you need if you want to become a train wanker. 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 Number one. A suit that is probably bought from Primark or H&M. Nothing wrong with that. But that have taken the label out and sewn in something like Gucci or Moss Brothers or just a really expensive brand. Number two, a nice tie that um, probably gets used every day and when you wear it you probably could pass for a politician. Nobody wants to be a politician. Number three, a pair of leather gloves. Even in the summer, even in June, these people always seem to have a pair of gloves on. Like they've just taken the horse out for a ride or they've just murdered somebody. Number four, a casual Italian scarf. Um, serves no purpose whatsoever, doesn't keep you warm. Literally just drapes itself around the shoulders and has absolutely no point. Number five, so one of these umbrellas. Um, the gentleman's umbrella, I like to call them. Carry them on the crook of their arm. Again, not raining, so don't know why you've got it. It's definitely July. And finally, number six, a newspaper. Now these newspapers aren't just any newspapers. They are the biggest newspapers in the world. So they're so big, you could use them for a duvet. And these are the people that manage to find space on a pack train to spread the newspaper right out and read it all the way to work. Cedric, hi, hi, yeah, Bertie here, how are you? Yeah, I'm just calling in regards to the uh, Milan deal. Yeah, just making sure it's gone through. Yeah, you're just at the Ivy. Yeah, yeah, fab. Oh yeah, fab, what are you having? Foie gras? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, I'm just on the underground at the moment. Yeah, technology, hey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how's Hermione? Yeah, she's still good. Yeah, you guys still rocking, fab. Yeah. I'm actually just about to read the shares column in the, uh, yeah, in the paper. Yeah, I'll just get that out. Of course, yeah, yeah, well, uh, as soon as the transaction's gone through, obviously, it just gives me a buzzel, yeah. Give me a buzzel on the old telefono. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll give Tarquin a buzzel as well. He'll probably come down the rugby club too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, God, yeah, yeah. Right, darling, okay, okay, yeah. Enjoy the ivy. Love to the family. Oh, my God, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Okay, you renegade. <laughs> okay, ciao darling, bye, 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 bye. So if you do see anyone like that on the train or on the bus or on your way to work, just keep an eye out for them um, because they are highly entertaining. And now that I've said it, you will definitely see them. Mark my words. So as well, this week I decided to uh, take myself off down to Downing Street. No not to welcome Theresa May to join the people who were marching against her. And it was amazing. We were marching against these two lovely people you might know. <laughs> My God, could there be any worse of a duo? So basically they were just marching on Downing Street and it started off with a few hundred people and then it grew and grew and grew to about 15,000 people marching. It was absolutely amazing. The amount of people that were all there marching for the same reason, it was fat. However, obviously when you're at the march, you have uh, people who are chanting and different things and saying different things. Everyone's got cut placards and signs. And somebody started off a chant saying, shame on me, as in Theresa May. Shame on me, shame on me. <laughs> and there was this one guy next to me that was just 
totally out of time with everybody else. So when everyone else was getting to the end of the shame on bit, he was only starting his shame on. And it was really off-putting, but also really funny. So it sort of went along the lines of this. Shame on, shame on me, shame on, shame on me, on me. Shame on me, shame on, oh my God, really? Shame on me. It genuinely got to the point where I was like, right, there's nothing else for it. I'm gonna have to teach him. Okay, so basically we're just gonna go over a few things, a few pointers that we have with uh, with your chant. It seems that you're slightly out of sync with everybody else, which is fine. We've just got the sheet music here, so we can just go over it. It basically starts at the beginning with the shame, shame, shame. It starts up here, shame. I'm gonna carry on through, and then it's gonna crescendo towards the end into the shame on me, and we all sing together as a chorus. The sheet music's got the words on as well as the notes. Okay, so you won't start there, off you go when you're ready. It had to be done. For the future of the United Kingdom, we had to tell him how to sing in time. Bless his heart, it was three words. My other favorite thing that occurred this week is um, when you overhear people's conversations and some of the phrases that they use in their conversations that just make no sense. My favorite one that I heard this week was the classic one of, I turned around and said, now, when you think about it, logically, it makes no sense. Because if you're in the middle of a conversation with someone, you turn around from them, you're talking to nobody. Rude, first of all. Second of all, you're not talking to anybody, you're talking to thin air. Third of all, you look like a bit of a weirdo. Oh my gosh, try right? So I went around to Dave's, yeah. No, we were saying we were going to have that conversation with him. Basically, I went around and I was like, I'm just going to have him, I'm just going to say to him. We were talking, and he was getting the amp with me, like really arsy. Dave, what on earth is wrong with you, babe? Do you know what? I'm not having this. So do you know what I did, right, Trey? I turned around to him and I said... He went up at old Trace, you know, but I thought I'm not standing for this, so I just had to tell him. And he left. <coughs> well, thank you once again, folks, for joining me on my vlog, What Is He Saying? If you enjoyed the vlog, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, if you didn't like it, it has been lovely seeing you, and like it, share it, subscribe, and I will see you next week. But in the meantime, ciao for now.